It's me going pretty much. Um, if everything that we do, if every, if every event that we do impacts just one life, you know, it makes a damn to somebody, that's all I care about. And in my eyes, it's, if that happens, then it's been a success. And that's what we tried to go with. Um, that's why I try to live every day. That's what, that's what keeps me going in the job. Um, I could go on and on about uh, you know some of our different programs and some of the um, the different items that we've picked up. Just a second. Oh yeah, we'll get some questions in a second. To tell you about some of the items we've picked up real quick. The first time that we cleaned the, uh, the little river area, which was off of uh, St. Augustine Road, we pulled uh, 10 tons of trash, litter, and debris out of there. That was back in 01, I believe it was. Uh, last year, we went back to that same area. We've visited some areas we go back to year after year, try to clean them up. Last year, I think we pulled about 300 pounds out of there. So to go from 10 tons to 300 pounds is, uh, I think, so. It's pretty significant. I feel like we're making a difference. Some of the items that we found, you know, some people ask me, Aaron, what are some of the uh, crazy things that you all found out in the, uh, you know, doing this stuff, picking up trash and stuff? Well, we've, we've pulled the uh, frame to a pickup truck out of a river. We've found an inflatable Santa Claus, a pool, a swing set. Um, that particular time we were cleaning the, uh, the Little River area, uh, had a volunteer find a lockbox that was full of uh, about 40 different prescription medication bottles. Each bottle had a different name on it, and there was a handgun inside of it, so the authorities were promptly called. And uh, um, that was taken care of. All types of uh, televisions. We've knocked down sheds, hypodermic needles, car parts, shopping carts, uh, hot water heaters, you name it, we've found it. All the way down to the kitchen sink. We actually got an award one time for even finding the kitchen sink. <laughs> we have a, uh, a website. It's called a KLVB, and it stands for Keep Lounge about us, the beautiful .net. And all of our information is on there. We try to keep a uh, running calendar of things that we have coming up. Like I said, I'm, a, I'm dependent upon interns a lot, so it hasn't been updated in about three weeks since I lost my VSU intern. But I'm figuring it out. It'll be updated in the next couple of days, so <laughs> bear with me on that. Um, does anyone have any uh, questions? Anyone? Don't be shy. Sir? I don't have a question, but I'd like to say thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate it. And just like anyone else, I just, I just try to do all that, we, all that I can, and so does everyone on our board. Um, you know, our, like I said, our funds are limited, but we try to do the most that we have to work with, and we're proud to be able to do so. Um, on that website, in addition to our calendar, there be, you can see photos from other cleanups that we've had. Uh, if you're interested in being one of our a board member, we have a, a application on there. Occasionally, we have uh, board spots open up, and sir, K L. VB stands for Keep Lounge Valasta Beautiful dot net, KLVB dot net. And if you ever want to stop by and say, hey, even though I'm not a city employee, my office is on the uh, third floor of City Hall, so you can often find me in there if I'm not trudging around in a river somewhere. So no one else has any questions, so thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Pleasure, young lady. Get some cards. If you... Okay, great. Aaron's leaving us some cards in case you need his contact information directly. One of the things that he talked about is that his board is made up of volunteers who are appointed by the city of Valdosta and by Lowndes County. And that the group is run with volunteers. Um, many months ago, we had Larry Hansen come and talk to us about the different boards and authorities to which you might be appointed. Um, another board and authority that's here in Valdosta, which is, as far as I know, completely volunteers, uh, is the Tree Commission, the Valdosta Tree Commission. 
And we have with us tonight the chairman of that committee, um, Mr. Kevin Conrad, who will talk to us about what the Tree Commission does, what its charge is, how it's funded or not, um, and what you can do. So, Mr. Conrad. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Man, the lights are bright up here, aren't they? Wow. Good evening. There we go. My name is Kevin Conrad. I'm chairman of the Valdosta Tree Commission, and we are a little known and fly under the radar commission. You probably, many of you may, or maybe you didn't, but I would suggest some of you uh, may not know that there is a tree commission here in the city of Valdosta. There has been for quite some time. I'm uh, finishing up my eighth year on the commission. We do have two available seats that will uh, come up for um, approval in September. If you're interested, you can go to the city website and there is an application process to, to uh, complete if you are interested. <clears throat> I have, and I don't have enough for everybody, but I do have some a handout uh, circulating in the room. And please remember on your critique on the guest speakers this evening, you always give extra credit to handouts, okay? All right. Um, you, ha you see the, those of you that have the uh, handout, you see the mission of the Valdosta Tree Commission, and I'll, I'll just simply say this. We are here to help preserve and protect the tree canopy and the urban forest here in Valdosta, Georgia. It's just that simple. We, we have a nice little mission statement. I'll let you read that for yourselves. We want to protect our environment. And Aaron, I'm going to tag off of what you said. We have one world and one environment, and we're here to help with the preservation of it. I've been called a tree hugger, an environmentalist, a tree dude, a tree guy. Um, you know, I really don't care because I'm who I am and it's just, it is what it is. Um, but we do function as a volunteer board. We are, hear me please, we are taxpayer funded. And I will challenge anybody to um, look at our statements, our financial statements, because we are wise stewards of your dollars. Um, I'm not afraid to stand up for that and I'm not afraid to say that we are taxpayer funded because we... Part of our mission is to receive tax dollars from the city of Valdosta annually. And the other funding source is through the tree bank. And the tree bank very simply is, and we call the tree bank um, that for a specific reason. From time to time, the city of Valdosta does levy fines against uh, developers, contractors, or individuals who do not follow the rules and regulations. And it's very simple. We have rules and regulations for a purpose, and they're there to be followed. If you don't follow them, you suffer the consequences. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, and we have derived this past year and a half about $35,000 into the tree bank from fines from basically um, developers and others who chose not to follow the rules. And so I accept that on behalf of the Tree Commission, and we have utilized those uh, dollars very wisely and continue to plant trees and do landscaping within the city of Valdosta. We have a number of projects listed here um, on both pages. Very simply, we just try to liaison with, as an example, Keep Lounge Valdosta Beautiful. We do, um, we work with them on occasion. We work obviously with, through the city of Valdosta. And our most significant event that we've done here of late is we've liaisoned and partnered with the Valdosta Lowndes County Chamber of Commerce to help them celebrate their centennial year by planting 100 trees in Valdosta and Lowndes County. And I say that to say this, to, to just say, let's go plant 100 trees is one thing, to actually do it is quite something else. It's not as easy as it sounds, unfortunately. A good example, if you're not familiar, is if you'll drive down St. Augustine Road going toward the um, airport in the median, there are, I believe, 65 live oak trees, maybe not quite that many, but at least 50 live oak trees have been planted in the median. We do not take credit for that, but we are very proud to be a part of that process with the Valdosta Lowndes County Chamber of Commerce. Those of you that will be here 20 years from now, you're gonna drive down that, that boulevard and go, oh my goodness, how beautiful is this? And that's why we're here. 
we want to leave a legacy for future generations to continue to preserve and protect the urban forest here in Valosta, Georgia. We have a number of things that we'd like to do. Again, it's easier to say what we want to do than actually do that because a lot of this, um, these visions and plans that we have involves landscaping um, on major thoroughfares in the city of Valdosta, and then we have a number of government entities involved in that, and it becomes a little more, <coughs> excuse me, a little more challenging um, when you have more than one governmental ent entity involved. So we continue to fight that battle, and we'll continue to try to plant more trees whenever we can. Um, the last thing I want to say is the city of Valdosta currently is without a city arborist. And you may think, well, that's whatever. Um, but the city arborist is charged with overseeing the um, plans that are submitted to the various departments within the city for permitting. And we have noticed a uh, digression of attention to some of those regulations here of late. And I'll draw your attention to the project across from South Georgia Medical Center on North Patterson Street. They have done a nice job of clearing most of the land. Um, and, and let me just say this too, I am not opposed to development. Actually, I am, I'm very pro-development. All we want is let's be responsible. Let's see what we can do with the site. And if we can save a few trees here and there, it will be better in the long run than clear-cutting the entire lot. That lot has not been clear-cutted, but they have re, uh, left a number of trees there in the, the front portion. My next objective is to make sure that those trees are protected, which they are not, and they, are, again, the developers or the contractors are not following uh, the, the code. I've drawn that attention, that, all of that to the attention of Larry Hansen. He, in turn, has, uh, is doing his magic and we hope to have some resolution on that um, in the near future. It all boils down to this. In conclusion, um, probably well, a couple, three years ago when the Lowndes County Judicial Building opened, Dean Poling from the Valdosta Daily Times did a really nice article on Valdosta, a city of trees. And he was, in his article, he was speaking about the view from the top of the Lowndes County Judicial Complex and all you could see basically in any direction was a canopy of trees. And that's not a bad thing, ladies and gentlemen, because what we want to do is continue to plant trees, promote the urban forest here in Valdosta, which in turn will draw jobs, will continue to promote business, and will continue to enhance what I believe are the four major economic engines that we have here in Valdosta and Lowndes County those being Valdosta State University, not only the students, but the faculty and support staff that goes along with that. Um, Wiregrass Georgia Technical College, which probably is one of the best kept secrets here in South Georgia. South Georgia Medical Center, which with the new health sciences building is next door or adjacent to it, could prom propel the hospital into a teaching facility, which will be outstanding for this community. And then, of course, our friends in the armed forces at Moody Air Force Base. If we can pull together as a community and promote things that are attractive to all those groups of people that work within those four economic engines, which would include green space, parks, recreational facilities, hiking trails, bike trails, all supported with trees and landscaping. How wonderful would that be? That's my vision for Valdosta. I sound like I'm running for office, don't I? <laughs> um, I've been here since 1991, and this is a wonderful community. I would really like it not to be so hot and natty, but, you know, that's out of my control. Um, we have a lot going for us, and we're going to continue to uh, do that and continue to plant trees. I can ramble on for more time, but I'm going to let you go with that. Any questions? Yes. Well, they have done a nice job of planting in their newer facilities. They have now. I will. Good point. Um, they have 
caused destruction of some trees with their um, ongoing building project. But the, uh, the, the ambulatory center, I think the new one, they did a lot of landscaping and tree planting right there. Um, when they were building the heart center, they did their very best to um, protect some trees. We did lose some fairly good sized oak trees in that. But, um, and I will just tell you this, and, and this is just a sidebar, um, because it is an authority, they are exempt from the land development regulations. So imagine that. Any other questions? Yes, in the back. Um, are you referring to across from the hospital? Yes. Probably. Which is, here again, all I'm asking and all I'm suggesting is let's follow the rules. And I'm not, I'm not saying that we did not, but I'm saying that it looks like there's some room for some improvement. So, he, yes. That's a great, that's an outstanding question. Um, I can answer that a couple of different ways, perhaps. Um, I don't know, it'd be probably a, one good answer. It, in conjunction with, we again, we do not have a city arborist which has been charged with compliance. So that would be the first answer. The second answer is because the culture in the past has been um, clear and build, it's just taken some time for awareness to come back in. And I, will, I can assure you it is excruciatingly slow, but we are making progress in that area as far as awareness with um, our current local builders. Here's a great example, and, I, um, and then I'm going to, Gretchen, then I'm going to step down. Um, I'm not going to name names, but the, there are two banks on opposite, cor opposite sides of the street at the intersection of North Valdosta Road and Country Club. There's one on this side and there's one on this side, okay? When they built the one, the big, bigger building on, on this or the south side, okay, the plan called and what the approved plan was to leave the perimeter with trees which they did. And then one night, somebody came in and cleared the, every one of those trees that they had left because they were going to impede the, the drainage tile that needed to be placed there, okay? I can assure you that that developer or contractor did pay the price for, that was a $10,000 fine. Now, does that replace all the trees? It does not, but it's a statement. Okay, so that, that was some resolution. When the bank on the opposite side of the street was under construction or in the clearing phase, it was the same contractor that built the one across the street. Okay? We had a nice conversation with them, we being the tree commission and the city arborist at that time. And they were dead set on not making the same mistake again and even went to great lengths to save the perimeter of trees that are currently there, which are mostly pine. The bank, and I will name this bank, Southwest Georgia Bank, did an outstanding job of replanting the site and also made a contribution to the Valdosta Tree Commission, so score. Um, so you have varying levels of understanding and compliance. I'm not specifically answering your question, but I can say this. We're making progress, it's very slow. We, we've talked with developers, contractors, home builders, 
here's the key, is the, the contractor and the engineer, or the engineering firm. And I've spent a lot of time with um, Jeff Lovell at Lovell Engineering, and he's, he understands, he gets it. And so if we're winning there, then we're going to continue to win elsewhere, and I guess that's the best I can say. Is that, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my cue to leave. Thank you. We can have some more questions at the end. Please hang around. Um, I advertised Deb Cox, but um, we got Susan instead. Yay! So Susan has some things to tell us from the Board of Elections. I'm not much taller than this podium, y'all, but can y'all hear me now? <laughs> um, I'm Susan from the, from the elections office, and I'd like to introduce you to Matt Flummerfelt. He, he is going to be our new trainer um, for poll workers, which is a huge, huge, huge job um, for any county or city. And he's going to be our new trainer for our poll workers um, starting for the November election. So he's in a in a process of trying to help us. Um, he's going to do a lot of tr different training as far as training um, people to hold uh, registration drives and all that kind of thing. So he, we're excited about having Matt with us. The reason I came here today to, ta to talk to y'all is because there have been a few changes as, uh, in what we're doing at the elections office and what we've just done. We just got pre -clear or got clearance from the uh, DOJ. The I'm sorry. I wander. Um, <laughs> Um, we just got clearance from DOJ and approval to close three precincts. And before y'all go, ooh, let me explain to you what we're doing. Um, our goal, honestly, is in years to come, which